Welcome to Next Game's video on the walkthrough of the new quest called The Silent Forest that allows you to obtain Siren as an avatar. I will also show an example of how the fight goes as well as show you what the new blood packs from Siren look like and how they perform. I've gone ahead and put the requirements for this quest up there on the screen, make sure you've met them. If you wish to skip right to the fight against Siren, it can be found at the timestamp of 2330. And if you wish to skip right to the Blood Pact examples, it can be found at the timestamp of 3410. To start this quest, we will need to go to Western Aldulin, E8, and speak with Laville. We now need to go to Eastern Aldulin and speak with Plo Trishbank at the gate to see Arcelia. You will now want to head to Esha Ruan and click the question marks near the entrance that you see here.
You now want to warp and head back to Eastern Aldulin to see our Celia again. You will now want to go to Khmer Drifts to this exact spot. The home point warp should get you pretty close, as will Bivik number 3. Once you get here, go ahead and click on the spot, and then say yes to enter your cutscene.
Now you need to get to the teleport crystal for your home nation. In my case, that's Bastuk, so I headed for Dem. Now it's important to note that if you need to do the siren fight again for some of the gear, you only need to return here to get the fistful of familiar soil. However, I have now waited both a game day and for midnight changeover and I am still unable to get the key item again, so it perhaps resets once per week uh, is my only guess at this early stage, so time's just going to have to tell exactly uh, how long you have to wait before you can get the key item again. You should now head to Lefalia and a cutscene should automatically begin.
Now we simply click on the drifting feather to enter the battlefield. Now I didn't find this fight difficult, but there are some things to keep in mind that I learned on my first Siren run. First, light skill chains will heal Siren, so I suggest sticking to dark weapon skills. Two, weapon skills in general do very poor damage, near the damage you would do to one of the HTMB avatar fights with the physical defense shield up. This means almost all weapon skills are only going to do about 2,000 to 3,000 damage. 3. Siren appears to take good damage from magical attacks. If possible, I suggest a dark skill chain with magic burst to have the fight go as quickly as possible. I was able to hit almost 20,000 damage with my MBs on Ninja, so I'm sure a Black Mage and some other ones that are much better at magic bursting can actually uh, make much quicker work of this fight. Tornado 2 only hit me for 200 to 700 damage, so it's not overly concerning, but you need to keep in mind that it does completely ignore your shadows. So even if you have 5, 6, 7 shadows up, it's still going to go right through those and hit you for the damage. On the plus side, it will not wipe your shadows. S Siren also has several AoE moves, such as AoE Silence, so make sure you keep your trust as far away as possible so that these moves do not hit them. Clarish Call is Siren's SP ability and it does 1100 to 1500 damage to you and all of your trust, regardless of how far they are away. This is definitely her most dangerous move, and you may want to double up on your white mages in the event one happens to die to this move during the fight. The last thing I want to mention is she never used Hysteric Assault on me, but if she did, I assume it would be blocked by three shadows, and probably do around 1500 damage or so if you didn't block it with shadows. If anyone was hit with this move and can confirm, please do so down in the comments. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to the fight and see what it's like.
And there we go. Pretty easy. Now you'll be given the option of three pieces of gear or to call Siren as your avatar. The gear you can choose from is shown here. And that will be it for the quest to get Siren. I hope you found that helpful. Now if you want to see examples of Siren's blood packs, keep watching. Now I do have to admit I was fairly skeptical when SE said they were releasing a new avatar of Siren, because frankly the last two avatars in my opinion have been very disappointing. However, I am pleased to announce that this avatar is extremely powerful and I think will fit very nicely into endgame plans. I'm going to go through all of her blood packs one by one, explain to you what it does, how much MP it cost, and how much damage it did during my test. After I've gone over all of the blood packs, I'll go ahead and have a short video for you showing you the visuals of what all of these blood packs look like. All of these tests were done in my endgame BP gear and done versus Apex Bats, Crabs, or Jagills. First we will talk about the Rage blood pack abilities. The first one is Welt. It deals physical damage and only costs 9 magic points. It deals 3000 to 6000 damage. The next one, Roundhouse, also deals physical damage and costs 52 MP. It deals a similar 3000 to 8000 damage. However, Welt, followed by Roundhouse, will make a detonation, so you can very easily skill chain with Siren. The next two we're going to go over are both magic abilities. The first one is Sonic Buffet. It deals wind elemental damage and dispels one buff off of the enemy. It costs 164 magic points. It deals 8,000 to 15,000 damage, and with the additional bonus of Dispel, this is a pretty solid move in Siren's tool chest. The Dispel is also 100% accurate. Tornado 2 deals Wind Elemental damage. It costs 184 MP, and it's been dealing anywhere from 16,000 to 20,000 damage with endgame BP gear. It definitely should be your go-to now when it comes to magic bursting a light skill chain. In my testing this morning, Tornado 2 has been consistently out-damaging Thunderspark, Therefore, I feel that Light Magic Bursts are definitely a very viable option for Summoner now, and definitely may out-damage a Dark Magic Burst using Thunderspark, depending on the mob's type. So this definitely will offer more versatility to the Summoner going forward in endgame content. 
Now this next ability is definitely Siren's best and the one I think everyone's going to be talking about. It's called Hysteric Assault and it delivers a threefold attack and additionally drains all of the damage you do as hit points and cures Siren with it. So this basically makes Siren an indestructible tank, for so to speak, as every 20 seconds you just use this move and get anywhere from 13 to 40,000 hit points back. So as long as you're not losing that many hit points in those 20 seconds, you can pretty much keep her alive indefinitely. And the great things about this ability don't stop there. You can use this ability to light skill chain with Ifrit's Flaming Crush, and I see that being used quite often going forward. I've also confirmed on the Jailer of Temperance that she in fact does deal piercing damage. So finally, Summoner has an avatar that can deal good, solid piercing damage. Now in regard to damage, this will do a consistent 13,000 to 22,000 damage to the Apex mobs, which isn't that impressive. But where this does become very impressive is when you combine this with Nirvana's AF3. The double attack affects this in a dramatic way, and the damage goes to a consistent 20 to 40k when AM3 is up. So we finally once again have a reason to have our Nirvanas as that has been kind of dropping away through the years as we've been using more and more magic blood packs. So anyone who has their Nirvana is definitely going to enjoy using Siren. Now the last rage ability we're going to talk about is Clarsash Call. This is Siren's SP ability which means you have to have Astro Flow active in order to use it. Now this did a consistent 30 to 35,000 AoE damage so that is nice. But like all the other two-hour abilities, it does take all of your magic points in order to use this. It's also been determined that for three minutes after Clarsash Call, Siren will get all of those boosts you see there at the bottom of the screen, making her SP ability more useful than the other avatars. So for the wards, the first one we're going to talk about is Catabotic Blades. This grants an arrow to everyone within range, and it costs 52 MP. Now this seems to be a fairly potent an arrow as it does about 70 damage per swing in my test. The next one we're going to talk about is Lunatic Voice. It only costs 37 MP and is an AoE silence ability. Sadly, it does not trigger Immunobreak, so therefore it may not be as useful in endgame content. It lasts 90 seconds. The next ability we're going to talk about is Chinook. It grants Aquaveal to all party members within the area of effect and costs 118 MP. It's a nice quick way to get Aquaveal up for everyone since Aquaveal takes so long to cast. Now, it lasts 15 minutes and prevents up to three interruptions. So for both your mages and your tanks, this can be very useful in endgame. Bitter Elegy will slow your mob's attack speed and costs 96 magic points. It's a very nice debuff that will last for three minutes and inflicts a 50% slow effect on the mob. This could come in very useful when it comes to slowing down endgame content. The next one we're going to talk about is Wind's Blessing. This grants a magic shield effect for all the party members within the area of effect and is very useful at reducing AoE magic damage on endgame content. It has been determined that with a level 122 avatar with a summoner's color plus 2, you will get a magic shield reduction of 43. The downside being that this sadly only lasts for a minute. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is the avatar's favor effect for Siren. It actually turns out that it's a subtle blow effect. Now the exact potency at this time is unknown, but my guess is at the high tiers, this will end up granting you somewhere in the 20s of Subtle Blow. Since you cap at 50, most melees should now be able to easily cap their Subtle Blow, which should make zerging mobs not quite as difficult for the tanks tanking them. That's it for all the abilities that Siren has. Let's go ahead and take a look at what some of these things look like. Now I do want to warn everyone that most of Siren's abilities and moves will wreak havoc and not work with the add-ons and plugins for Windower 4. This is because she's brand new and basically those add-ons and plugins haven't been given the intelligence about her moves yet. That'll of course change over the coming weeks, but in the meantime, things like her BP damage just aren't showing up in my log. So for these videos, I went ahead and disabled all of my plugins and add-ons so that we can actually see all the things going on. What this sadly means is I don't have any gear swapping going on, so please don't pay attention to damage numbers and stuff like that, because most of these fights are just done in a single set of gear for the entire fight so that I can get an idea of a specific thing, i.e. physical BP damage, magical BP damage, etc. Let's go ahead and see how some of these abilities look. This first video is simply going to show you what each of the abilities looks like. Enjoy.
As you can see, Siren's gotten low on hit points, so let's go ahead and use that new hit point draining ability of hers and see how much hit points she gets back. Wow. We'll go ahead now and show you the rest of the abilities. Of course, if she gets low on hit points again, we'll go ahead and use that hit point draining ability to bring her back to full, and we can continue like this indefinitely. That will be it for all of her abilities. The only one you haven't seen now is her SP ability, and we'll go to the Eshin zone in order to show you that. And here is her SP ability. Here I am confirming that Siren is in fact piercing damage on the Warder of Temperance. And for my last video example here, I just wanted to show you what the damage looked like when you have AM3 up. So let's go ahead and see what our damage looks like now that we have AM3 up for our Nirvana. And that's just a small example. I've seen it spike as high as about 40k. Well, that's going to be it for the Siren video, everyone. I hope people have found this informative and useful. If you have any questions, as always, go ahead and post them down there in the comments. My Ambuscade videos for the month will be coming here in the next few days. Everyone have a great week.